Operator scanning for target. Azimuth 222. Altitude 2 kilometers. Target acquired. Standby. Missile launch. Target destroyed. What's small, British, and possibly guarding the presidential palace in Kyiv? Meet the Raven Air Defense System. Word is, it was deployed as an extra shield for one of the most protected spots in Ukraine, the presidential office. Not bad for a system that looks this modest. But what about this strange looking piece? Kind of like King Charles III's tobacco tin. Does it actually work? Well, the answer might just be written on the cabin door, in tattoos. And wait till you hear what Ukrainian soldiers have to say about it. Stick around, you'll want to see this. Each of our kills is marked here. That's a Zala, an Orlin, a Supercam, a Missile, a Shahed. And what's fast, British and hunts drones for breakfast? This is the Stormer HVM air defense system, another British beast on Ukrainian soil. But how good is it when the sky's full of Sheheds and Lancets? Our crew has destroyed more than 70 targets, mostly drones like the Zala, Orlan, and Supercam. Its appearance might be more traditional, but the Stormer still looks like the love child of a tank and a lunchbox. Both machines could be called Baby Sams or Baby Faced Killers. But as you can see, these not-so-aristocratic machines know how to get the job done. The secret lies in what the engineers built into them. Hidden tricks even their fancy cousins don't have. Some upgrades were only possible in wartime, when those endless general-stuffed commissions suddenly stop mattering. Time to talk about those battlefield-born innovations. Let's go. Imagine a proper English housewife. She's got leftover potatoes, a bit of chicken, a can of beans, some spices from 2008, and maybe even dog food. And what does she cook? Smoked bacon. That's basically how the engineers at MBDA approached it. While they admit the challenge was tough, it took just three to four months to go from concept to a ready-to-deploy system. They shipped it to the front before the Ministry of Defense could even print out a manual. So what did the Brits have to work with? A pile of missiles. Complex not only. The system provided by the United Kingdom is equipped with ASRAM-132 missiles. Missiles like AIM-132 are usually mounted on fighter jets, but the Brits flipped the concept, turning this air-to-air -air missile into a surface-to-air one. By now, we're kind of getting used to this trick, but this time it gets even weirder. 88-kilogram AIM-132 missiles were mounted on pylons salvaged from retired Tornado, Hawk, and Jaguar fighter jets. All of this was installed on a high-mobility transporter 6x6 platform, a Supercat HMT-600 with a four-seat cabin. Honestly, those cream-colored seats look like they were pulled straight out of a British business sedan. Jaguar, Bentley, Vauxhall. Drop your guess in the comments. To top it off, they added optics and sensors left over from other projects. The result was the Raven Air Defense System, quickly mastered by Ukrainian troops. It's a really simple system, just four switches and a fire button. During combat, I pick the missile and hit fire. It drops off the pylon and reaches the target very quickly. Judging by how the control panel looks, there's no doubt this is still an experimental model, but the operator says the missiles fly very fast. So how fast are we talking? All right, let's reveal what Ukrainians usually keep to themselves. The AM-132 has a top speed of over Mach 3, but when it's launched from the ground instead of a fighter jet, that speed drops to Mach 2 to 2.5. Still, that's fast enough to get the job done. It's designed to hit UAVs, all types of cruise missiles, ideally even aircraft or helicopters. The first Ravens arrived in Ukraine in spring 2023. By May 2025, Eight launchers had fired over 400 missiles at enemy air targets. The overall effectiveness? Around 70%. With that speed loss come other trade-offs too. For example, when launched from a jet, the AM-132 has a range of 25 kilometers. That's actually close to what the much pricier NASAMS can do with its own adapted AMRAM-C missiles. Before we continue, please hit like right now. It really motivates us to keep making videos about real battlefield weapons.
not fantasy toys like Chinese sixth gen paper fighters. Thanks. Launching from the ground means spending extra energy on acceleration and fighting gravity. So Raven's real world range doesn't exceed 12 kilometers. As for altitude, the ground-launched AM-132 is effective against targets flying up to 8 kilometers high. Some specs, however, haven't changed much in the transition to ground launch. For example, the AM-132 can still maneuver under up to 50 G. That means the missile, both its structure and electronics, can survive forces 50 times its own weight while pulling sharp turns. That's 10 times more than any Russian cruise missile can handle, and 5 times more than most modern fighter jets. So when chasing down a cruise missile, ASRAM moves like a hummingbird dodging a bulldozer. This is truly one of the best missiles in the world. But even it has one sensitive weakness, its infrared seeker. For a fighter pilot, this is great. It allows for a fire and forget launch, shoot, break off, and let the missile do the rest. No further guidance needed. But the downside is that IR-guided missiles are vulnerable to thermal countermeasures, even though this seeker is a modern one. Maybe that's why Raven's success rate is 70% instead of 90% like the Stormer HVM? Either way, it's time to crack open this royal-looking box. Now, back to the Stormer HVM, which stands for High Velocity Missile. It's the self-propelled version of the Starstreak man pads mounted on the chassis of the light FV-101 Scorpion tank. No, there's no business class comfort here. It's more like an old food truck run by a retired Pakistani uncle. But Stormer uses laser-guided missiles. And those are a whole different story. There's a joystick for laser control. The missile follows the crosshair on the screen precisely. Thanks to this laser beam riding guidance, the target has almost no chance of fooling the missile with heat flares or evasive maneuvers. And escaping the star streak is nearly impossible. These missiles fly at over Mach 3.5. Now, that speed isn't enough to catch the fastest targets. For star streak to turn a drone into Swiss cheese, its max speed should be under Mach 1 to 1.5. Still, that's fast. But Starstreak has more tricks up its sleeve. Uh, this missile fires darts. Here's how it works. After launch, Starstreak splits into three metal darts. Each one knows where it's going and how to hurt, because each has its own guidance system and delayed action fuse. If one misses, the other two almost always hit and literally punch through the target. They follow the laser path painted by the operator. It's like throwing three darts at a dartboard. At the same time, and doing it multiple times with both hands. While Raven carries only two missiles, Stormer in action feels more like firing a revolver. It's got two launch bays with four guides each, so you load eight missiles with a max range of up to eight kilometers, plus 12 more Star Streak missiles wait in reserve. That's very handy. The crew can reload right at the position. Another special feature, Stormer has no radar, which is why it's often called invisible. It emits nothing, so the crew doesn't need to worry about enemy anti-radiation missiles. However, we took down a Zala that was marking a target for a Lancet. Luckily, the Lancet hit just three meters away from us. So yes, the enemy can spot Stormer visually, which means in this war, not even invisible air defense crews can afford to relax. At the start of the war, Ukraine's short-range air defense relied mostly on Soviet systems. For example, the Strela 10 tracked SAM is also based on a tracked chassis. But its range is much shorter, up to 5 kilometers, and the max altitude it can hit targets at doesn't exceed 3.5 kilometers. The OSA air defense system has an interception ceiling of up to 5 kilometers. It was one of the key Soviet-era short-range air defense systems used by the Ukrainian armed forces early in the war. The OSA's main feature is its built-in radar, which gives it autonomy. But the radar is so outdated, you could say the OSA is like a grandma with binoculars and a shotgun. She might hit something, but only if it's not moving. Tunguska looks a lot more impressive. It has a range of 8 kilometers, the same as the British Duo. It also comes with twin 30mm autocannons in addition to missiles. However, Tunguska is a nightmare to maintain and weighs 34 metric tons. That's three times heavier than the British systems. But the Tunguska crew is protected by welded steel armor, 
it can stop 7.62 mm rounds from all sides, and the front plate can withstand 12.7 mm rounds from long distance, although that's not guaranteed. So how are the crews of the British air defense systems protected? That's a fair question, since with their limited range, both the Stormer and Raven are forced to operate dangerously close to the front lines. Let's start with the Stormer, which is based on the Scorpion, technically a light tank. Once we rolled out into position, stood there for maybe five minutes, and then the artillery started hitting us. A shell exploded right in front of me, I saw it, hit the gas and ran. And it runs well. It can go almost 80 kilometers per hour and it's pretty maneuverable. To be honest, Stormer's armor is like British humor, subtle and not great in every situation. The hull is made of aluminum, 20 to 60 millimeters thick. It protects against 7.62 millimeter bullets, light mines, and as you just heard, even shrapnel from a 152 millimeter shell. But Raven doesn't even have that. Its only armor is the crew's prayers. So let's sum it up. These two weirdos complement each other like a pair of rowdy Brits at a pub. One throws darts, the other throws insults, but both hit the mark. The Stormer appeared in 1997 when drones were still mostly sci-fi. It was originally designed to hunt helicopters and close air support jets, and yet it's adapted pretty well to the drone era. Its main downside? The missile needs to be guided by laser all the way to the target, which means the crew must stay in position longer, increasing their risk. The Raven was created as a response to the new reality of war, where the skies are packed with UAVs. Because it's a mashup of different systems, Raven earned the nickname Frankensam. What's truly impressive is how quickly that concept was brought to life. Since Raven uses fire and forget missiles, its crew seems to be safer. Or are they? Let us know in the comments. What matters more for a modern short-range air defense system, speed or armor? Or maybe you have your own idea for how to fight drones? Share it below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. When you hit that subscribe button, you help us convince His Majesty the YouTube algorithm that this channel is worth recommending. Thanks for watching.